All right, this is another recap chat 90 day fiance this time the happily ever after spinoff 90 day fiance follows a real life couples one from the u.s one from another country they follow all their relationship struggles their issues their ups and downs their hopes and dreams their cultural differences their language barriers and we get to see all of that and see if they're able to get through this 90 day fiance process and become man and wife all of the other legal ramifications of getting your visa all of that is 90 day fiance all right this particular spinoff is happily ever after we start off with mike and angela michael was suspected to have a nigerian group that targets caucasian older women so they can get into the country um we're not sure how if that is 100 percent correct from what Angela's seeing, she's suspicious about this group that he's a part of. But she's glad that after seven years of the process, she's finally able to bring her husband home to the U.S. They're spending Christmas together. She uh, she gets to introduce him to the grandkids, and you know, he's supposed to be the new man of the house. He's African American. She's Caucasian. She, again, she's older. She's the grandma. And her daughter is there along with all of the grandkids. And her daughter's a bit suspicious of him. And they kind of talk about this um, during this episode. Last one for the season. But uh, again, they're spending Christmas together. The food is an issue for him. Michael just doesn't really like this food. He likes his food better. Not really into American food. Uh, She's happy they're spending Christmas together. She called Michael um her santa and he said hoo hoo and she said no it's ho 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 <laughs> that part was kind of funny uh the family's all asking him you know how does he feel about the u.s and what's christmas like in nigeria and all of these different things and then the issue of him not taking any pictures while in the u.s comes up and he said his phone got broke because angela broke it so the cat's out of the bag with that there's trouble in paradise again her daughter Skyla kind of takes her to the side and they talk about their issues and she's like you need to kind of address these issues and not act like everything is fine and we may go back and forth with these couples because this is a talk and watch so I'm not haven't seen the conclusion as I'm recording this so we will have our conclusion as we close out the episode um, of me actually watching the show now rob goes back to talk to sophie he's broken up with her she's about 24 i think he's 34 or something of that nature and um they've just been having issues back and forth she keeps going over her friend's house and um staying there because she just keeps having issues with rob instead of them talking it out and trying to work things out she just keeps fleeing the scene and that's kind of his issues that they they don't work things out she leaves she's upset and they don't try to come to a common ground so when he breaks up with her she just runs uh, into her friend's apartment the first time and it's just like uh brushes it off the friend comes out and just like reads him his rights or whatnot and he says what he has to say so he ends up leaving but then she's calling him texting him telling him to come back and all of this and when he comes back to talk more she's like yelling at him saying i should have left you why are you leaving me i didn't do anything she's um she says well okay if you just want to leave me then um go ahead she's not understanding the fact that She's kind of more fleeing the scene and not working things out as a married couple should do. So she just basically told him to come back just to tell him to leave again. It's like, well, fine, if you don't want me, fine, you can go. You'll never see me again. What, 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 right? <laughs> but then after she's gone, she's after he's gone, she starts kind of breaking down. She can barely speak. Her friend is trying to console her. So um, then she rushes outside and she's like trying to find Rob again. And I'm like, he's not gone yet. Is he just waiting for her to like run after him? I don't know why he's he still there. <laughs> I don't know how much time has passed, but he's out there, right? So then 
she basically was, well, before she was saying, well, I should leave you the way you treat me or whatnot, but now she's kind of begging him. They they didn't show us the shot. It was raining out, so I guess she went into his car and, you know, was begging him, saying she's sorry, she's stressed out. She, you know, she was kind of destroyed. You know, first she thought it was a fake, fake dumping. Like, she's like, oh, he can't be serious. He's leaving me because, you know, I'm the da-da-da. She didn't say that, but, you know, that's just the vibe of like, oh, he don't, he can't even think that he's going to be leaving me, right? So once he really does leave for the second time she's destroyed she's whining she's crying she barely speak now she's begging him for forgiveness telling him he's she's sorry she's in his car i we can't see all the visuals but maybe that's why she did it the way that she did it because she did not want to be caught on camera begging for her man back because she feels maybe it should be the other way around and maybe it's not a good look for a chick to do this but it is your husband i mean she doesn't know how to be a wife he doesn't know how to be a husband they need to kind of grow up and learn together and you know it's okay to kind of mess up and not know everything but you have to be able to admit that if you're going to move forward um i'm sure there's gonna be more to say about that couple emily and kobe's parents are like okay you're having your third baby in our house it's been five years you guys probably uh need to leave as you said you were gonna do emily is upset she's mad at the response she's acting kind of like a spoiled brat to me um she's being rude to her parents kind of talking back to them i know she says she's in her 30s she's 32 that don't treat her like she's 12 you know she said she's been working towards getting a house and they've been taking the steps so she was upset the way her parents were kind of like you need to leave because they promised they would not have a third child in their house Kobe seems to be the voice of reason and he's trying to be flexible he's saying we're going to do what we can to try to find a place she wants the perfect place and he's like well we'll just find some decent place so that we can leave as we promised and she just seeming extra rude and all that then i was thinking oh maybe it's the hormones maybe that's why she's acting that way um and maybe that is true uh she did kind of say that later on but she's acting some kind of way she's acting a little spoiled i feel like she always was a little spoiled her parents probably spoiled her pretty good but at this point they're like you know you need to do what's best for you and get on your own two feet basically and have this third baby in your own place okay so uh for alisi thais and patrick and the brother john they're having alisi's very beautiful expensive brazilian party i think it's really more of a party for the mom thais as well because she's returning home after i think it's been a couple years bringing her new husband and new baby so you know they're having a nice little party there her dad kind of made up with patrick and they're getting along but he's not feeling well so he won't even be able to be at this party which is the main reason that they've come to the country as well as of course see the family and friends and so they have this great party and Patrick's like, she's only six months. I mean, I've never even heard of anyone having a six-month party for a kid. You, you gotta be a year or something. But he's like, she's not even gonna remember this, even though this he's like, this party is better than any party that I've even thrown for myself. But he's also gonna take this time to talk to his dad and kind of set some boundaries because he's had issues with his dad kind of leeching off of him, having certain financial expectations and helping him and and paying him for this apartment and he feels like this is the thing that bonds him and his dad because they haven't really had a strong bond while he was growing up so now he's gonna talk and kind of really get down to it and I'm glad he was able to open up and talk to Carlos which is Thais's dad and they were able to squash that issue and now he's going to talk to his dad and hopefully they can cover some ground they can you know get some emotions out of the way and put some things in the past that need to be put in the past and resolve some things so i'm hoping the best for patrick that this works out between him and his dad and so it's after the pageant and 
I think that Jasmine won one of the titles. I think it was Miss Latina. Uh, it was an international title for a pageant. And she, at least she won one of the titles. But honestly, she was having a tough time trying to learn how to live pageant life and have that walk and have all of that look down. And Gina was kind of critiquing her heavily and she wasn't feeling that. So now that everything's done, she's kind of upset about, you know, how things went down, even though she's happy that she won something. She's kind of sad that the pageant's over and now it's back to trying to deal with Gino. And while they're in the lobby, they start talking about her paperwork being completed. And, you know, it became an argument because she thought it was completed and he said, no, he's still working on it. So she feels like he's playing games with her and maybe he doesn't want her to stay in the country. I don't know what all of her thoughts and how, how she's feeling, what she's thinking is, but it's negative and she's upset with him as she has been. And he's like, he's not feeling it at this point. I don't know if he's stalling the paperwork because he's just saying whatever he does, he can't keep her happy, he can't make her happy. He may in a way be stalling because they keep just having issues and bad blood between each other. So we'll see what happens as things go further when it comes to their relationship. And we'll talk more. Let's talk more 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After. And this is the final episode of this season. So for Ashley Manuel, last time was his birthday and, you know, they were at some, I think a whiskey bar or something like that, a whiskey tasting place, something like that. And the whole family was there. The sister kind of had the family to the side and kind of let the cat out of the bag. They were having arguments about finances. And that day they had just recently made up and said, you know, he started opening up about some things when it came to the money and he's asking for this money and not being transparent about where it's going. So finally, while they're both drunk, actually, um, the family kind of confronts him on this financial, this money issue, even though they're supposedly made up. Uh, the family didn't really know all those details uh, except for the sister so he finally confesses half drunk that you know he took that the last thousand dollars that he asked for not for his family but to pay off his own debts back in his country so he he fusses and complains about how she spends her money the fact that she has a lot of uh, debt from college but he's turning around using her money to pay his debts as well. So it's, she called him a hypocrite. It's definitely a double standard um, with the way he thinks. They're fighting at the table. You know, he finally tells the truth. Uh, and they're just saying, don't trust him. Mom's mom says she's got her. She can let him go. You know, so she, the mom still thinks he sent that money to the ex as well because that was the issue that um, he does have kids with his ex, so it's possible that he sends money to her, but he, she didn't know how much communication that they were having. So she thinks the ex is still involved. Uh, Ashley just has just trust issues generally with everything that he's been doing and saying and everything that's been going on, everything that he hasn't been saying. They're both drunk at this time. They're upset. They're yelling. They're saying, you know, she's saying we can't fix anything tonight. We're both drunk. Um, so that's the scenario with Ashley and Manuel. And happy birthday to him. He he says, you know, we can start over tomorrow. We can start from stretch. You know, what's done is done. And she's like, no, we can't just keep doing this. And you just say we're going to start from scratch. Just can't keep going this way. And, you know, he may end up having to go home. And he, he said that, I believe. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Their relationship's been pretty toxic and volatile the whole time. So I don't know. Alex and Lauren. And it's Alexi. Uh his wife Lauren has gone through the mommy makeover it took a few months for her to heal they have three young kids and a lot was put on him and because she has body dysmorphia body image issues she still wasn't happy 
with how the fat transfer because she was trying to get more um, full on the top area but the fat transfer kind of didn't take the way that she thought she's thinking more surgery so you know she's just now healing and the doctor did say it would be about a year before she could do anything else and that's just now completely healed and it's not really even complete you know it takes a while to heal again it takes about a year but he's saying you know let's go have a party with our friends it's really like an intervention party and all of her friends are saying she looks great they're giving their advice as far as um what she should do next uh, she's just saying what she wanted to be different mostly just the top area to be fuller um her husband al alex is like he doesn't want any more surgeries one of the friends said are you gonna keep doing surgeries and be kim kardashian at some point um uh, her husband's like more surgery is it the answer if you have body image issues uh, therapy they're saying you know the friends are saying therapy is needed um and another friend saying you know you keep looking for the next thing to do i know she wanted to start her career and do all of these things as well just right after the surgery she wanted to do that and i wasn't happy with alexi's response yet and still i do agree that she needs to kind of settle down and he's saying you know the things that she may want to look for to pursue in the future may be toxic to their family and relationship because these things may just seem especially with the surgery may seem you know vain but i understand on some level where she's coming from but i do believe that she needs therapy um truly and i hope the best for her with Jasmine Gino, he's saying he may put that paperwork on hold until their relationship gets better, uh, which I don't think he should hold that, hold her to that due to the fact that she wants to see her kids and this citizenship, um, her paperwork being uh, finalized will help her to be able to go travel back and forth to see her kids. So for him to put that in her face like that, and to hold that over her, even though he didn't directly say that, I don't think that's the right thing to do. Their relationship is volatile, but I really, I really don't know how to handle that. And I don't know if they're going to continue in their relationship or not. You have to be, you do have to be careful with some of these things here when you're supposed to be committing to this person and you're going to be financially responsible for them and all of that. It's a lot to address don't know what's gonna happen between these two patrick and their dad actually talk and during the party and you know he kind of breaks down in front of his dad he's talking about the apartment and how he has to kind of keep this apartment to help his dad out um but he says that was their bond is this apartment because his dad wasn't really around and he's his dad apologized says you know my dad wasn't around either but um he he's like well that's really no excuse i just been hurt by the situation is what patrick says so whether they have the apartment or not you know they're saying yeah we're family i'm your dad still he's like you're my uh son still they hug it out you know forgiveness is there he said he never saw a sun break down like this before and it's a beautiful thing how everything's coming together he says now he has his dad and Thais's dad and he tells Thais what happened still kind of a little shaken up she hugs him and kisses him it was very sweet and then they they both celebrate John for being there because he kind of opened the door for the two of them um her dad carlos and patrick to kind of connect and get her dad's blessing on them so you know all in all the trip worked out really well you know they're partying having fun celebrating the little baby elise they're having a little dance party like each person kind of gets in the middle it's giving me a little bit of soul train but it's not exactly soul train but it's fun to just see everybody having fun celebrating and it seemed like it was a happy ending for that couple Patrick Thais and the brother John always in the middle um with Michael and Angela 
and they're trying to make things work again they just had christmas together and whatnot she's still not fully trusting of him because he's a part of this group called paradise men and her daughter skyla's like you know you need to follow up and get a private investigator if you still don't trust him so she's still unsure she got him a new phone but you know she needed to get his phone and it took about 10 minutes to bring the phone and when she went in the room he kind of jumped so she feels like something shady still going on um because she broke the last phone so she was so mad so she's still unsure if he's has a scam group going on scamming women to get into the u.s older women um also that he looked up a life insurance policy that history was on his phone he looked up life insurance for people over 50 and she's in that age range and then you know he there was a cheating issue that they had that she forgave him of so it's a lot of different things on the plate the private investigator says he has a lot of connections even people in nigeria he'll be able to get that information and the truth will come out on michael um rob and sophie will be close out with them she's having anxiety attack she's in the car she's like you know not understanding why he's trying to leave her she's saying she's sorry and all of this and then she tells him to come in the house but she needs water she has a throat infection they had no idea about this um she said i she put her whole 20s into this guy she's only 24 by the way but she put her on her whole 20s the best years of her life you know you got a lot of good years left you're not even in the middle of your 20s yet but she says she doesn't want to put that all the weights i know you are married to the person as well you went came from your country to be in, with them and their country it was a lot they had a lot of different issues and he had some online cheating issues as well so when he goes back in the house and they start talking furthermore again she starts yelling at him saying well if you don't want to be with me you can leave you can leave you can leave so she's got him on yo-yo because you know in the car she's whining on the phone she's texting please 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 but when they're in person together uh, and the cameras are all on them both she's like leave why don't you just leave so she doesn't know what she wants she's putting them on yo-yo she doesn't want to look a certain way she said this was, was embarrassing her friend Kay, which is also a lesbian and she's bisexual by the way sophie is i mean she's acting like she's the man of the house as far as i mean she is taking care of her she's like you know you don't need him i'll continue to take care of you because she's been at that her friend's house so much she almost doesn't even live with her husband anymore she doesn't understand how they need to kind of work together and fix their issues and she's kind of putting it all on him and her friend was crazy her friend Kay said he's satan roaming the earth I'm like wow she's she's really uh putting it hard on him but she keeps saying you know what's wrong with me why am i the issue and all that so i guess that's why Kay felt the need to call him satan i don't know if it's all like that but it was a crazy episode crazy last episode of the season and the tell-all is coming guys they're going to be all living in a house together i believe they said it's going to be five episodes for the tell-all and i'm not sure how many hours that's all going to be chalked up together but that's a lot of work to put in uh to review so what i may do is wait until all five episodes are over and just kind of recap my final thoughts on everybody and everything and the whole situation so we'll see how we're going to do the tell all we still have you know 90 day the other way to cover as well and there's a new show coming out forbidden love so there's a lot to talk about when it comes to faith love and trends and tlc reality dating shows relationships not just dating these people are trying to be married trying to get married are in the um process of getting their visa they're engaged so it's, it's some serious relationship stuff going on guys so we're gonna talk more about it faith love and trends right here on cbiz media thoughts comments questions email me at cbiz tv at yahoo.com that's cbiz tv at yahoo.com all the best and god bless